Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. Be joined by Mike Irvin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 149, Sum, Sam, or Sue. Hey, welcome back to the uh, Dueling Excel podcast. Today's question sent in from YouTube. How to count or sum the sales for Sam or Sue? Can you tell me the formula for that? Well, you know what? I'm not going to do a formula. There's an easy, easy way to do this. I insert a pivot table. We're going to put it on an existing worksheet right there. Click OK. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to have the sales reps going down the left hand side and then sales and now we have the sum of uh, sales for each person if we want to see the count as well we have to take a text field like sales rep and move that there and now we get the count so we know how many orders they had and the sum now when Mike read this question he thought that they wanted uh, the total for Sam plus Sue so in other words an or criteria and if that's the way it really is and what we're going to do is take sales rep and move it up to report filter and then select multiple items and choose both Sam and Sue. Click OK. And there's our sum. There's our count. Easy. No formula needed. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Oh, yeah, the pivot table. That is fast and easy. Oh, but wait a second. The person asked for a formula. Hey, you know what? I'm not going to do a formula yet either because there's a bunch of cool ways to do this. And I, I do interpret this as or. We want to add Sam or Sue all into one number. So check this out. I'm going to use the table feature. Click in a single cell in the data set, Control T to convert it to a table. Enter. Now I'm going to come below the sales column because we want to add with two or criteria and then count with two or criteria. So I'm going to click in the very last cell and use the keyboard for the auto sum function, alt equals, but because it's below a table, it put in the subtotal. Now I'm going to come over here and there's a drop down, so I'm going to select count, not count numbers. And now I'm going to filter, uncheck, looks like the filter Mr. Excel used on the uh, pivot table, Sam, Sue, click OK, and boom, there we have it. I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Excel, see if he has a formula. Filter, well, hey, what do you really have here? This is a criteria range, so let's do this, equal D sum. Here's the database, comma, which field do we want? Field 3, comma, and then the criteria range is right here, except for one very bad thing. The criteria range has to have a valid heading. Sales rep, bam, it works. And I wasn't very careful about putting dollar signs in. That's OK. Let's do control apostrophe, which brings the exact same formula down. And we'll just type D count instead of D sum. Keeps all of the ranges the same. It doesn't lower them down by one. And there's our count. But Mike, I still think I'm not convinced he's looking for uh, the total of Sam or Sue. He used the word or here, meaning count and sum. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I will go with this. Let's see what you have. Oh, yes. D sum and D count and the D functions. Those are beautiful functions. Now, hey, Mr. Excel, I got to apologize. That or, I actually typed that in. The person who asked this question or typed this out had and there. But because being the teacher I am, this is technically OR criteria, so I changed it to OR and created all this confusion. So the person really did want to add Sam or Sue together. And usually in language, we use the word AND anyway. So, all right. Uh, you know, I'm still not going to do uh, a formula. I know there's a bunch more formulas we could do. I'm simply going to go up to design, because this is a table with a total row, and add a slicer. When I add this slicer here, I'm simply going to click on Sam and Sue. Oh, wait a second. How do you click? Oh, you have to hold the control key if you want two items from your slicer. And then boom, there we have our slicer and our subtotal functions for count and sum. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Slicers? Hey, I don't need Excel 2013 and your slicers. My pivot table could do slicers. Here, we'll take this sales rep out, uh, insert slicer, sales rep, click OK. And I don't even need the control key. Oh, look, they remembered it. That's funny. Just click on Sam and drag down to Sue, and bam, they're both selected. But hey, let's face it. We're dancing around this, right? It's a formula, and everyone out there watching knows it's a formula. Of course, 
count if and sum if is the way to go. Sam and Sue, our other employees are Dennis and Donna, really handy that they started with D and Sam and Sue started with S. So check this out, count if, so B6 to B20, the criteria is S star in quotes using a wild card. Same thing with the sum ifs, look through C6 to C20, B6 to B20, S star, we get Sam and Sue. Mike, over to you. Man, I love doing these duels. Man, this week's been terrible. I've been sick. My kids are sick. And doing this duel back and forth is the most fun I've had in so long. And I get to learn this. I had no idea that you could simply click and drag. I thought you had to use the control trick. Look at that. Oh, and then an asterisk, a wild card. Totally beautiful. Now, I'm going to do a formula over here. And, you know, for two or criteria, you could simply use a count if, two count ifs, right? To add, you simply use two sum if functions or sum ifs for that matter. Now, these are the formulas I have in my Control Shift Enter book. And I actually have a bunch of formulas for this. But PMSOCHO at YouTube, absolutely amazing YouTube channel. He read my Control Shift Enter book and then sent in this formula. Equals, hey, just use count if. And highlight the range of names. And comma in the criteria argument, you just put both criteria. Because it's two of them, count if will look through here and spit out two answers. This is a function argument array operation. So when I highlight this and hit F9, of course, count if will spit out both answers. Well, if we need to add them, we could put it in sum and use Control Shift Enter. But why bother when you have some product? It can do array calculations without using any special keystroke to enter it and enter. Now, of course, for Adding, we simply do the range. There's the all the criteria. Our function argument array operation, comma, the sum range. Close, close, and boom. That is beautiful. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, that was cool putting both uh, criteria in the second argument of sum ifs. Check this one out. Control C, take the sales reps over here. Control V, data, remove duplicates, OK. Now that gets us just the unique values. I'm going to come over here and just put uh, 1 and 1, 0 and 0. Now this trick I'm going to use requires the list to be sorted, so we sort the list. Here's the count. Ready for this? Equal sum of the old-fashioned lookup. Look up all of these names, comma, in this table. The old-fashioned lookup always gets the uh, rightmost column of the table. It's always a comma true lookup. Close the lookup, close the sum, and enter. And Control Shift Enter. There's our answer. So there's the count. Now let's take a look at this. If I go to Formulas, Evaluate Formula, Evaluate. Sure enough, it's giving me an array of ones and zeros. So I'm going to multiply that array of ones and zeros by those values there, and I should be able to get the sum. Let's try it out. Control apostrophe will bring this down, and then some product of that lookup that gives us the ones and zeros, comma, this range here, and are the parentheses balanced? Yes, we end in black. Control Shift Enter. Bam! There we go. Mike, back to you. That's the point right there, Mr. Excel. That is amazing. The most original solution in this whole video, the old lookup and a unique list, zeros and ones. I absolutely love that. Oh, man. Does that mean I have to come up with some more solutions? Oh, no. Uh, well, here's a silly one, right? Last time I for counting, I used some product and count if. Well, how about some products and count ifs with an S? Or for adding some product and some ifs with an S. Now. Check this out. Some the last example I did for counting, I did some product and count if. Well, if you use some function, you have to use Control Shift Enter. But watch this. If I use that same formula, some requires Control Shift Enter because oh, that's a function argument array operation. But check this out. If I convert that from a range of cells to an actual array constant. I'm going to hit F9. There's those curly brackets. Curly brackets house array constants. Semicolon means row, comma means column. 
if I leave it as an array constant, it won't require Control-Shift-Enter. Now, I cover this in my book. Not all formulas will take array constants without Control-Shift-Enter, but it's amazing how many will, right? So here's that uh, noted down there. I just hit Enter. And boom, that works. Same with our sum and sum ifs. If for some reason you absolutely did not need this, this criteria was never going to change, then the golden rule of Excel is, hey, if it's not going to change, then just leave it. Whoops, Control Z, I, I highlighted the wrong one, criteria F9. If the golden rule is, if you're formula inputs don't change, just hard code them into your formula. Then you don't have to use sum product, just sum and enter will do. Hey, a couple more straight from my Control Shift Enter book. There's that one, is number match inside of sum product. And even this one, the old if with two arrays added together, and then the value if true is one with Control Shift Enter. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, well, that was cool. A record nine back and forth. So, you know, at the model off, Mike, the way that they score this, the $5,000 prize there on the, at the finals, is which formula is the shortest formula. Now, there were so many formulas, I've lost track of which one it was. We'll have to go back and figure that out. But the one thing I loved in that, that last uh, formula you showed, the formula was cool, but what I really liked was let's say that we forgot to hit F4 or something like that. You actually clicked right here on the argument name. And it selected that whole argument so I could press F4 easily. Uh, a lot easier than trying to go in there and choose the cells using the mouse. Just uh, click there. What a cool, cool way to go. All right, well, hey, I want to thank everyone for uh, hanging in there and watching this whole thing. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel. And Excel is fun.